Today, however, we have uh, Ali Lebeau from the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, as you all know, it's located in Long Beach. They have a collection of over 11,000 animals representing over 500 different species in habitats ranging in size and capacity from a 5,000 uh, gallon uh, aquarium to a 350,000 gallon aquarium. It opened in 1998 and they see uh, over a million and a half visitors a year. And Ali LeBeau is from the development department in Ali. Thanks for joining us and uh, it's all yours. Great, thanks Richard. That was a wonderful introduction, sort of got us started. I am going to share my screen with you. So as Richard said, I'm from the Aquarium of the Pacific. I am in the development department. I'm really excited to share what we've been doing this last year and what we hope to do in the future. A little bit about me. I've been at the aquarium since 2004. I started in the education department. So that is me in the back there from an old uh, education program about the different school programs that we offered. Um, and that is my original beat up ID with our Hawaiian shirt uniform at the time. Um, my background is in biology and education. I also was an outdoor educator. I taught on Catalina Island um, field trips and kid groups that student groups that came out to the island. Um, and about two years ago, I moved over to the development department, which has been really exciting because now my job is to talk about the aquarium and all the things that we do and to continue to move forward with, with our mission and what we hope to accomplish. So we, are, of course, are a nonprofit. We're a mission-driven facility, and you can see our mission and our vision there. Uh, but our goal is, if I had to say it differently, was to connect people not only with the animals in the ocean, but also to connect to each other about the role that they play in protecting the planet. So we are the one species on the planet that has the biggest impact on all of the others. And we want to be thoughtful about what that impact looks like. Um, and to do that, we have to have sometimes some difficult conversations. Of course, we're also um, an AZA accredited institution. That's the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. I always like to add that in there because I do think that it's important to remember that we go through every 10 years, and in fact, we are just a few months away from our 10 year accreditation which means that we are keeping the highest level of animal care standards, highest level of education standards um, to keep pace with the industry. So when we think back on 2020, um, we all know that it was, it was a doozy. And um, Richard mentioned that we typically serve over a million visitors. In 2020, we were able to serve over 500,000 visitors. Um, and that was done despite being open only 91 days, fully open only 91 days the entire year. Um, typically, we are only closed on Christmas Day. That's the only day. So we went from 364 days to just 91 days of being fully opened. Um, you can see some of the measures that we celebrated in 2020. Um, we were still able to serve over 170,000 students, teachers, and families through our virtual programs. Uh, we launched a really exciting partnership with LA Unified, and we continued our conservation work. So we released uh, 1,100 white abalone and 300 giant sea bass into our coastal ecosystem during that year. And I wanted to share with you uh, very quickly. Let's see if my computer will let me do it. Oh, come on. Here, I'll do it like this instead.
All right, so that was just a little overview of how we got through 2020. Ooh. Forgot to share again. So that was how we got through 2020, but here we are in 2021 and we feel hopefully like everyone else that a little bit of weight is lifting off our shoulders. Uh, we're taking a little bit of a deeper breath and we are really excited to report that we are now fully open again. We've been fully open since mid-March. We still are operating under reduced capacities. We're functioning at about 25% capacity. Um, and we do require advanced reservations uh, for everyone, including our members to come and visit. Of course, members have that free reservation. Uh, we are also still um, accepting any comp tickets that expired last year. We're still accepting those um, and help and allowing folks to make those reservations um, online. So who are we? Well, when I think about sharing what the aquarium does, I kind of think about three different categories of the work that we do. The first is that we care for our animal collection. And uh, Richard mentioned that it was about 11,000 animals. We are now officially able to say 12,000 animals at the aquarium. Everything from our huge seals and sea lions, penguins, all those charismatic animals down to jellies, octopus, crabs, sea stars, um, representing the Pacific Ocean and caring for those 12,000 animals, feeding them, um, having our vet staff work with them is of course the foundation of what we do and probably why most people come to see us. We also pride ourselves on being an educational organization and we connect with our community. Of course, that looked very different in 2020 but we know that some of those are going to remain. We know that we've been able to re reach a larger audience through our virtual programming. So some of that will continue, uh, but we're also excited to have people back on site to touch animals, to interact with our volunteers and to have those really wonderful experiences in the galleries. And then finally, something that you might not be able to experience to know about when you're just coming for a visit is our conservation efforts. So in the past, many of these have been around the world efforts where we have sent staff to different parts of the world to work on coral restorations. Again, in 2020, we had to stay a little bit more local, but we are continuing to work on white abalone, which is an endangered animal propagating white abalone and then releasing them back out into the environment to watch them grow. And uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with an abalone, but it is an invertebrate. So it's kind of like a snail, except the shell is flat. And uh, I don't know, I think this picture is adorable. And it's not usually an animal that people would describe as adorable. So I sort of love that baby abalone. Um, our giant sea bass in the middle there, that's a baby giant sea bass. We were the first organization to successfully uh, propagate and grow a baby giant sea bass in a zoo or aquarium setting. We have now shared those techniques with other partner organizations um, and we're able to release those out into the environment. Um, we're working with Monterey Bay Aquarium on sea otter surrogacy, which is pairing orphaned pups with foster mothers in uh, zoos and aquarium settings with the hopes that those otters are able to be successfully released back into uh, the ocean, which will contribute to um, growing those populations. This summer, if you come and see us, you even if you've come to see us before, hopefully you'll notice some slight differences. This summer, we're highlighting coral reefs, which we call nature's underwater cities. So our tropical gallery upstairs on the second floor has gotten a little bit of a facelift. Some new animals have been added. Um, some changes have been made. And we're really highlighting this really important, incredibly diverse habitat. Uh, we're also sharing a new film on corals here in the lower right hand corner. You'll see a view of our Pacific Visions Gallery, uh, Pacific Visions Theater, um, where we are highlighting our new coral theme. And then up here in the upper left, uh, we have a shot of our art gallery, also part of our new Pacific 
vision space um, where we have a paint a fish. So each of these little screens allows guests to draw their own fish. And then that fish goes up on the wall here. And we found that that's really popular. And I admit with people of all ages, I have always been impressed when adults really get into creating their own fish. So you heard me mention Pacific Visions a couple times. If it's been a number of years since you've come to see us in Long Beach, you might not have experienced our new front expansion. So this officially opened in May of 2019. So it wasn't even open a full year before our temporary closures due to COVID. So the design of Pacific Visions is to combine an art gallery, a theater space, and a science center together to explore the impact that humans have on the planet and to tackle difficult challenges to make the future that we want to see for our planet. And the goal of this space was really to be designed as a, a black box. We've had symphony, symphony performances in there. We've had um, dance performances in there. We've had uh, film previews, we've had lectures. You can see on the bottom right there, we recently hosted the High Tide Student Film Festival in that space. So this is the, the space where we are asking people to interact and then be inspired as they move through to the other gallery spaces. Um, and we know that our next opportunity is really desi designing how to continue to use Pacific Visions in this future that we want to create for the aquarium. So we want to invite you. I know usually when I talk to people, they say, oh, we know the aquarium, but gosh, I think it's been a while since we've been there. So we want to invite you to, to visit, to explore, to connect, to join. There are multiple levels of memberships and multiple levels of benefits at those memberships that may be of interest to you. To learn more, to see how, um, to discover something new about the work we're doing. And if it connects with um, your interests, of course, to support. So what is happening at the aquarium? Here are a couple activities that I wanted to share with you. First off is this Saturday is our first and hopefully our only ever <laughs> virtual Blue Whale Gala. So this is our uh, biggest celebration of the year. Um, this year, we made the decision to go online and have it be virtual. However, I will say that by going virtual, what we've been able to do is we're able to offer a relatively low ticket price for anyone who wants to join the program. So a fully with a fully de tax deductible $50 donation, you get access to the program um, that is only being shown through, uh, through that link on that day. Um, and I did include that link right there if you're interested in learning more about the gala. It's hosted by comedian Eliza Schlesinger. I just saw a little clip of her and it's really funny. Uh, it also includes a musical performance from Cody Lee, who has been performing here at the aquarium since he was just a kid and just recently won season 14 of America's Got Talent. So we're really proud of our connection to Cody Lee. You can also see some other family programs. Um, and again, and then that last one on June 27th, Plastic Bag Store. Um, is in partnership with UCLA. We're going to be showing a film in our Pacific Visions Theater. So that is an in-person program, that, that plastic bag store. And that's my presentation. I wanted to share my contact. I'm also going to put that in the chat box so that I can close that up. And uh, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have about the aquarium. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Helen. Okay. Am I? You're on. Um, Dick and I volunteered there for four years when it first opened. Oh, wow. And it was fascinating. The, the training program, my gosh, was like a a master's program in zoology and ichthyology <laughs> from the, the Shad Museum <laughs> Aquarium staff that came. It was rigorous, but it was so much fun. And I think in this era of COVID where you've done Zoom, you'll be able to reach out more uh, 
a memory I had was um, when they were doing the, the mobile, mobile presentations in LA County to schools that couldn't afford to come for a field trip. One day when we were there on a weekend, there was a, a young boy with his parents. He had never been to the ocean and he came with his parents after having this experience in his classroom. And that boggled my mind to think that a child in LA County had not been to an ocean. So bringing them more information virtually is very exciting. Congratulations. Helen, thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, I have, obviously I was not here at the time, but I have heard about the 10 week, like you said, master's level <laughs> dive. I even heard that they made you do tests and that there was a big <laughs> binder. Um, so you are in a very elite class of, of volunteers. You'll also be happy to know that we have made major adjustments to make the onboarding just a little bit simpler. But um, I've heard from many of our charter volunteers who, who wear kind of a, a badge of honor that they went through that initial training. <laughs> you can tell what your background. Well, I had, I had a master's in oceanography, so it was, oh. <laughs> it was really fun to go and get a lot, get a good refresher there during the course. <laughs> any other, uh, any other questions for Ali? Yeah, so I've got a, a question for you, Ali. First of okay. all, how come when I was watching the video, why was I thinking of the movie 50 First States? <laughs> uh, I assume your operation is a little bit more professional than that. <laughs> So I vaguely remember that movie. I think that I, I remember that it was filmed in, uh, remember it was filmed in Hawaii. In and Hawaii. when it first came out, I feel like people were like, oh, if Adam Sandler could take care of animals, I could do that. Anybody could do it. Um, yeah, I am always so impressed with our animal care staff. Uh, they are asked to do so much. And, and, and again, in 2020, you know, just like a lot of other organizations, we had to go through some very difficult reduction in force and reduction of hours and reduction of positions. And our animal care staff, you know, you can do a lot of things at home, but you can't feed a penguin from home. You can't uh, monitor your fish from home. So they followed incredible safety protocols they were cross-trained. You had animal people who were typically working with the fish and invertebrates being cross-trained with birds and mammals. Um, and they just really took on the challenge and said, this is, we love this place and we love these animals. And, and this is, this is where we're supposed to be um, with, you know, again, with reduced hours, with more, more work to do. Uh, they carried an incredible load during 2020 and are professional and expert and able to talk about their work. Um, it's just really incredible the, the, the work they do. So yeah, we, I like to think that that was a great movie, but uh, you know, we do have some uh, pretty incredible animal care staff for sure. You must have a, uh, a huge budget for food and upkeep of, of the animals. Yes. Yeah, so that's, you know, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because, uh, you know, when you think about zoos and aquariums, uh, aquariums are really expensive because our animals eat restaurant quality seafood, <laughs> which is a lot more expensive than some of the food uh, that animals at zoos eat. Um, and we have a lot of water um, and those costs don't go down when there's nobody in the building. So we could make some, some adjustments on staffing based on uh, interactions with humans. But, um, but yeah, we have over a million gallons of water and uh, we rely on a lot of that to be delivered by a big truck that comes to us a couple times a week. Um, so our filtration system, our life support um, systems that monitor the, the, the water, uh, those are some really high hard costs to, to keep the aquarium running. So um, that was definitely a challenge of 2020 for sure. Allie, one of the things I remember when we were there, the, uh, the aquarium was one of the first aquariums to have the leafy sea dragons. And mm -hmm. have you been able to share that now with other aquariums and see the population grow? 
Yes, that's they're a really interesting um, animal. So as you probably remember, it took a lot of um, work and effort and uh, time to be successful in that. And uh, my understand, I never got a chance to meet her, but the scientist who figured out that procedure, I believe has now gone on to, she was working here at the aquarium. She's now gone on to do her PhD and she is really, really influential in the field and sharing what she knows. Um, we are no longer propagating them here just because it does take so much time and space and effort. Um, and we'd still have a few, we still have some weedies um, but I, I do know that that is a lot of that work is, is happening in Australia where they're native. But yes, that was a, a milestone for us, for sure. Are there any other questions? Just Johnny. quick comments. Allie, thank you so much. Uh, a few years ago, we took our grandchildren to the aquarium for Thanksgiving and had a lovely turkey dinner there. <laughs> oh, good. And, Thanksgiving's a great time to come. It's oh, it was interesting. Yep, it was great. But I just, I'm an old Naui scuba instructor and I've interacted with many of those species in the wild. And it's just so wonderful to see them made available for people that aren't comfortable going under. And it's just amazing when, every time we visit there and anytime you need someone to hop in the tank and feed the fish, I'm available. Thanks, Johnny, I appreciate your kind words. Yeah, it's great. Any other questions? You mentioned you worked on the island. Is, are you talking about Catalina and uh, do you do stuff with them as the aquarium working with the island? Uh, so yes, I do, I, I do mean Catalina. I lived there for a few years. I met my husband there. I got married out there. It's, uh, I should have been getting my master's maybe, but I lived on Catalina for three years instead. Um, <laughs> We have relationships with the um, with the staff at Wrigley. We've worked with them in our education team. Um, there's a lot of overlap also uh, with the dive program at Rig at Wrigley and our dive um, dive operations here. There's lots of overlap of folks. Um, we always host the um, Johnny. I'm sure you're familiar with this. We always host the uh, the chamber evening. Um, which is the fundraiser for the hyperbaric chamber out on the island. Um, we have some relationships with the conservancy, but I don't know if we if we work with them too closely. So I think a lot of them is a, a lot of our connection is really just through uh, sort of um, personal relationships and and, and education opportunities um, with Wrigley uh, mostly. Okay. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, Ali, I want to. Thank you on behalf of the club for a great presentation and bringing us all up to date and something to, to look forward to now as you open fully and uh, we're all able to get out and spend more time uh, doing the things we enjoy doing. But thank you so much for Absolutely. a great presentation. Thank you Welcome so much back. for having me. My email is in the uh, chat. So if you want to follow up, please feel free to do, to, to do that. And again, thank you so much for inviting me. And I'd like to remind all the club members the presentation at the Tustin Museum and Thursday morning, jump in the pool, be ready to go. And then uh, next week, a week from today, the district awards ceremony uh, by Zoom. So uh, we've got some things to look forward to and look to see all of you again, same time, same station next week. With that, I can- Thanks, Thank you. Welcome. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.